Hichi tutaongea kuhusu jinsi ya kujenga ndoa. And uh, I will first talk about the difference between male and female. Na nitaongea kuhusu tofauti kati ya mwanamume na mwanamke. When we understand the difference between male and female then then we'll find it not so hard to overcome the marriage problems. Tutakapo elewa utofauti kati ya mwanamume na mwanamke na ndipo tutakuwa na shida katika ndoa. It's actually wisdom of God to create men and women different. Ni heshima ama ni hekima ya Mungu kuumba mwanamume na mwanamke kitofauti. But after the fall of mankind, lakini baada ya kuanguka kwa mwanadamu, the strength of the woman and the strength of the man can become problems in a marriage. Nguvu za mwanamume na nguvu za mwanamke zinaweza kuwa shida katika ndoa. Okay, let me explain first how God created man and woman. Wacha nifafanue jinsi vile Mungu aliumba mwanamume na mwanamke. The characteristic of man is that they pay more attention to action and work and doing something. Asili ya mwanamume ni kuangalia vitu na kuweka katika kazi na kutenda mambo. Now you can write this down. This is very important. Hii ni ya muhimu sana. Now for women the strength is in relationship and feelings. Kwa mwanamke ni kwa usiano na kuhisi. Now God created men and women like that for, for different reasons. Mungu aliumba mwanamke na mwanaume kwa njia ya tofauti. You find that most achievements, you know, physical achievements, scientific achievements were made by men. Utapata ya kwamba kufanikiwa kwingi kikiasili inatengenezwa na mwanaume. And then women pay attention to relationship and feelings. Na mwanamke naye anaangalia sana kusihana na hisia. And that's why they can take care of the children and the family and the husband better. Na ndipo wanaweza shughulikia watoto na mwanaume vyema sana. And women can feel other people's feeling more than men can. Na wanawake wanaishi jinsi vile wengine wanaovisikia zaidi ya mwanamume. Women also like communication. Mwanamke tena anapenda kuhusiana. They uh, you know for men, you know many things they really don't want to talk about. Kwa wanaume kuna mambo mengine hawatataka kuyaongelea sana. But women will talk about good experiences and bad experiences. Na wanawake wataongea kuhusu mahusiano mazuri na kuhisi kubaya. Many times I went buy something with my wife wakati mwingine ninaponunua kitu na mke wangu we live with her parents tunaishi na wazazi wake and then when we came home tunapokuja nyumbani she would tell her parents especially her mother ataambia mama yake sana oh i i wanted to buy this product nataka ninunue hii kitu i don't find it anymore sikuipata zaidi and i look at other products na nikaangalia nyingine and this has this strength Na hii iko na nguvu hizi. This one other one has other strength. Na hii iko na nguvu zingine. And I compare the prices. Na mimi kalinganisha gharama. Na nikapata ni nunue hii. Now when, for me, when I, when I bought something and go home, kwa ngo mimi nikinunua kitu nikienda nyumbani. I'll just say this is what I bought. Hii ndio nilinunua. I will not go into any detail. Sitaenda kufafanua sana. I have no interest to talk in the detail. Sina nafasi ya kuongea kwa mapana. I don't think it's important. Siisi kapuni ya muhimu. But for her is relationship. Na kwake yeye ni uhusiano. And it's very natural for her. Na yeye ni ya kama umbile yake. She just likes to talk about it. Anapenda kuongea. She asked me one time. Aliniulizia siku moja. When you have something unhappy, do you like to do you need to talk about it? She asked me, do you need to? Na kama una kitu chenye ufurahi, unataka tuongelee. I said I don't need to talk about it. Na mimi nikamwambia sitaki tuongelee. I can talk about it. Naweza iongelea. But if I don't talk about it, na kama sitaiongelea. I don't feel bad. Sisi vibaya. If there is any problem, kama kuna shida yoyote. If I can handle it, kama naweza kabiliana nayo. I won't want to talk about. It. I don't need to talk about it. Sitaki kuiongelea. But she said for women is different. Wakasema kwa mwanamke ni tofauti. Where is something good? Kama kitu ni kizuri. Something bad? Ama kitu kibaya. Women like to talk about. Mwanamke ataiongelea. And this, you know, to them is 
Seeing what's inside the heart. If not, they feel that something inside them cannot come out. But for men, we want to, you know, do some ministry <laughs> or some housework <laughs> or kick football. So men like action. Yeah. Women like to talk about feelings and things. And that's why many men say, my wife nags too much. She always tell me to change this, change that, and how to handle her problems. And a man said, this is too much trouble. <laughs> and then for the woman, they say, my husband, when he chased after me, he talks a lot. When the husband chased after the, the wife before the marriage, he will find a lot of things to talk about. But after marriage, or after when they are committed to each other, the men start not to talk so much. <laughs> My wife asked me this question. How come they can talk so much before marriage while the when a relationship is firm and then they don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> you know, I thought about it. The reason is <laughs> most men chase after a woman. <laughs> it is a project. <laughs> he wants to win a wife. <laughs> so he changes behavior <laughs> to win the wife. <laughs> and for the wife to get married <laughs> means I have a man I can talk to, I can relate to and spend time together. So she expects to have more talking. <laughs> but for the men, I have accomplished the job. <laughs> I got my woman already. <laughs> you just do the chores, <laughs> cook the food and do the work. I'll come home every day. We'll just eat. And I'll sleep at home. That is marriage. Isn't that enough? But for the wife, she said, I want love and romance. But for the men, the romance is when dating. <laughs> when I reach after you, I enjoy that. But after I accomplish this task, unless the woman become, I mean, stay being the same as like a young girl. Now most Girls, after they get married, they become very responsible. Now you can write that down. The sense of responsibility is another characteristic of women. The sense of responsibility. Now, sometimes when the, there is no food in the home, the father might not notice. Baba hata jua. But the mother always knows. Lakini mama ana jua. And what the children are doing, the mothers always know. But the father may not know. Some father even forget the names of the children. <laughs> so, 
especially the age. <laughs> at the age. At the age and the birthdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for women, the sense of responsibility and taking care of everyone is very strong. Lakini kwa mwanamke, ile jukumu la kuwajibika linakuwa na nguvu siku baada siku. She remembers what is happening to the children. Unakumbuka chenye kinatendeka kwa watoto. And if the relationship with the husband is good, na usiano na mume kama ni mwema, she remembers anakumbuka different things about the husband. Ni vitu tofauti kuhusu huyo mzee. If I'm bitten by a mosquito one day, kama nitapigwa na nilipigwa na umbo siku moja. Nilipigwa na oh, niliumwa na umbo siku moja. Next day she will check and see if it's still the bite you know the bite mark is still there. Kesho ataangalia kama ile alama ingali pale. Now my wife is really a loving wife. Na mke wangu ni mke ambaye ni wakupenda sana. And I really treasure her. Na mimi namdhamini sana. My wife is a great gift from God. Yeye ni kipawa kikubwa kutoka kwa Mungu. In order to keep this great gift. Angopiweka hiki kipawa kikubwa. I should do what Paul said to do. Na nitakana nifanye chenye Paulo anasema tufanye. Husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church wana umependeni wake zenu jinsi vile bwana nipenda kanisa if i want to keep her loving me kama nataka nimweka endelee kunipenda i should love her nataka nimpende now even just now when we are break time saa zile tulikuwa na na mwele wa kupumzika i was talking with my wife nilikuwa naongea na mke wangu when we went to have the lunch tulipokuwa kule kalani i sent messages to my wife nilimtumia ujumbe now she Stay being like a girl. Ameishi tu kwa kama msicha. Many women, when women when they after they get married, they become very, you know, responsible for the children and the husband. Na wanawake wengi wanapoleka, wanakuwa wa kujukumika kwa watoto na wanaume. Now this is a strength from God. Hii ni nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu. God gives them this sense of responsibility so that they won't you know let the children die of starvation na mungu aliweka hii jukumu kwa ili ya kwamba watoto wasikufe kwa ajili ya njaa but after the sin of mankind lakini sa zile dhambi ilitokea then women could have negative feelings mwanamke alikuwa na mawazo ya kinyume and decide to control alijaribu kujizuia so wives would say to husband ya mwanamke angambia mwanaume you didn't clear the garbage wewe ulitengeneza shimo. You didn't help me. Au kunisaidia. You didn't listen to me. Au nisikizi. And marrying you is like marrying a wall. Nikokuwa wewe ni kama kuoa tu ulimwengu. Talking to you is like talking to a wall. Nikokuongea na wewe ni kama kuongea na ukuta. And then the wife becomes unhappy. Na mwanamke anakuwa mwenye anakosa furaha. When she says something, please fix that. Akisema kitu anasema weka hapo. If he doesn't do it, kama afanye hivyo, she will say five times. Anasema mara tano. If he still doesn't do it, kama atendi, he will say five ten times. Atasema mara kumi. And everything she want to say, na kila kitu she anataka kusema, she will say ten, ten times twenty times. Atasema mara kumi ama mara 40. And what happened is, na nini natendeka? The man say, "Oh, when I'm when before marriage she was not like that. Na kabla tuohane yangi hapo kwa hivi. And after marriage she's changed. Na baada ya kuohana amebadilika. I like her to be like the girl before, you know, when dating. Nilimpenda alipokuwa msichana tulipokuwa chumbia tunachumbiana. And the woman said I like her to be I like him to be the time when she was dating me. Nilimpenda jinsi vile alivyokuwa kinichumbia. So both men and women changed. Wote wanaume kwa wanawake hubadilika. And they became tired of each other. Wanachoka mmoja kwa mwingine. But when we realize the differences between the sexes na tunatambua utofauti kati ya maumbile ama jinsia and when we do something that really make the other person happy na tunatenda mambo ambayo yanafanya mtu asifurahie now i put a new definition of love nataka ni ukufafanua kuhusu upendo to love is to make the other person feel good kupenda ni kumfanya mwenzako aisi vyema to make the other person feel she's he or she is important. Kumfanya huyu mwenzako kuisia kwamba yeye ni wa muhimu sana. For instance, some men they give a gift to the wife. Kwa mfano kuna wanaume wengine wanapeana vipawa kwa wake zao. They might give a 
exercise machine. Akaonaweza kumpa mashini ya kufanyia mazoezi. You need to exercise to reduce fat. Unataka kufanya mazoezi kupunguza mafuta. That's something he wants a wife to do. Hiyo ndio kitu nataka mwanaume mwanamke afanye. But that's not what the wife wants. Na hiyo si mwanamke anataka. So that is not a gift of love. Hiyo sio kipawa cha upendo. But the man said this our love na when when mother said my boy don't need to be a basically is our of the decide to change the wife na yani anataka abadilishe mwanamke not to do something the wife is happy about sio kutenda kitu chenye mwanamke anafuraha kwa ajili yake but if we do something the wife is happy about na kama tutatenda kitu chenye mwanamke anapenda zaidi she will become happy atakuwa na furaha and we can communicate na tunaweza kuhusiana for instance sometimes when my wife is Sometimes she gets emotional. Na wakati mwingine mke wangu anakuwa na hisia. But most of times she has very little negative emotions, very little. Na ako na ila hisia za kinyume kidogo sana. I thank God for that. Na mshukuru Mungu kwa sababu. Now even when she's emotional, na hata akiwa wa hisia, we have this communication between us. Tuna uo kuhusiana kwa kati yetu. I just tell her in a gentle way. Namwambia kwa njia ya upole. You are a little emotional now. Wewe uko waisia kidogo sasa. She stop right away. Anasimama hivyo. Now, anaacha hivyo. She makes me very happy. Ananifanya kwa furaha. She has learned not to overwhelm the husband. Amejifunza kutowekea mwanaume msigo. That's what the Bible says. Why submit to your husband and honor your husband? Na ni posa bibili na sema wanawake mtihini wase wenu. But the wives cannot submit and cannot honor unless the husband loves her. Na mwanamuke awezi kupendama kufumilia kama mwanamuke ampeni, mwanaume ampeni. If the husband doesn't listen to her, kama mwanamume hamsikizi, she will keep talking over and over again. Ataendelea kuongea na kuongea tena. She want to control the husband. Anataka kuongoza huyu mwanamume. Now so we know this difference between man and female. Na ni posa tunajua hizi tofauti kati ya mwanamke na mwanamume. So how can a Christian man and a woman be of the marriage? Na ni posa swali ya mwanamume na mwanamke inaweza kuja katika ndoa. Now I want to talk about a five languages of love. Nataka ni can write that down. Ninataka niongee lugha tano za upendo. The first language is uh concentrated time together. And the and divided attention yani lugha ya kwanza ni kuhusiana pamoja yani kuwa na mawazo yasiyo gawanyika now usually women see that as more important wanatakani uone mwanamke wa muhimu sana when husbands talk to wives mwanamume anaponongea na mwanamke your wife like you to turn off the cell phone mwanamke anataka ufunge simu yako and not to look at the watch the tv or the newspaper usiangalie tv wala gazeti or do other things ama kufanya vitu zingine she wants you to listen to her anataka kumsikize and many men say this is a waste of time na na wao wengi watasema hii ni kupoteza muda i mean it's something so simple ni kitu kingine rahisi sana why does she have to talk so long so long so long mwanga nini aongea sana 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 Now this has to be have com good communication between the husband and wife. Inatakana kwenda mausiliano yaliyo mazuri kati ya mwanaume na mwanamke. When a wife talks, azile mama mama naongea. If the man think of the feelings of the woman, kama mwanamke mwanaume atasikia hisia za mwanamke. If the woman says, "Oh, it's so hard to take care of the children." Mwanamke anaposema kwamba ni vigumu sana kushughulikia watoto. Let me ask you, what is her feeling? Unaisijaje? What is her feeling? But this is very important. This is part of counseling. It's, it's quite simple. It's very simple. When your, husband, when your wife says, "Oh, it's so hard to take care of children." So what is her feeling? Manamuka na posema ningu msana kushuguli kia watoto. Isi ayako ni ni unaisi kivipi. Now, write this down. This feelings down. And there, a few feelings that we have. First is number one. These are feelings. Isi ambazo tukunazo. Si ya kwanza ni. So I interrupt the five languages of love. Here is five, six feelings. One is glad, 
glad or excitement. Glad. Ya kwanza ni furaha ama kwa na furaha. And then number two is sad. Sad. Ya pili ni kukasirika. Mad. Number three is mad or anger. Ya tatu ni hasira. And number four is afraid. Ya ine ni hofu. And number five is a shame or guilty. Na ya tano ni ahibu wama kwa ibika. Okay. Now so, in English it's easy to remember. Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed. It's very, it goes together very smoothly. Na inaenda kwa huzuri ama kwa haraka zaidi. And then number six, hurts. Number sita, mwaz, mo, kukwazo. Yeah, okay. Anyone help you? Hurts. They feel hurt, like someone, you yell at someone, that person feel hurt. Yes. Okay? So, these feelings, glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, hurts. Okay, now, you, you got it all, right? Can you, can you say, you, you give the mic to him to say, say out the six. Okay, say it out loudly. Yeah, six, say out. Uh -huh. Number one, one to six. Excitement. Uh, and the first one is happiness. No, don't say it in English, say in your language. One is happiness, it's not excitement. It can include excitement, but happiness. Say it in your language, not English. Praha. Go, keep going. Two. Kukasirika. Three. Eh, kuwa na asira, uoga, eh, aibu ama haya, na kumiza. Okay. 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 Now, let me ask you, when a wife says, it's hard to take care of the children. Mwanamuka na posema, ni vigumu sana kushugulikia watoto. What could be her feelings? Isia yaki na kuwa ni nini? She could feel unhappy. Anaiza kwa na esi hana fura. She could feel angry. Anaesi hako na sira. She could feel. I mean, there are other feelings too, but this is a category. She could feel helpless. Anaiza esi hako na hana usaidizi. Physically, she could feel tired. Nada kiasi le na anaiza esi hako na mechoka. Now, if the husband says. It's no problem. Don't think about it. Just keep doing it. And the layer we find. The wife has more anger. You did not hear me. Now, in Chinese, we have a, a, an expression. The expression is. The heart of a woman is like a needle in the ocean. It's hard to find a needle in the ocean, right? So it's hard to understand the heart of a woman. Now, the reason is because most men are not in touch with their feelings. You ask most men how you feel, he'll say, nothing. Nothing, no problem. Then he will not understand, he will not feel the feeling of a woman. But if the husband can say to the wife, I know you have worked hard to take care of the children. I know it's very difficult. And you have done a good job. And I like you for doing such a good job. The wife would be very happy. <laughs> she would not keep nagging. When we understand her feelings. But it takes time to learn. And the wife can help the husband. By telling him. Do you know I you know I feel unhappy now? 
Unajua na hii sijafurahishwa leo. And I like you to listen to me. Na ninataka unisikize. I don't want you to tell me what to do. Ndio sitaki uniambie cha kufanya. Now, there is difference between man and woman. Ni shida ya kukati ya mwanamume na mwanamke. Men like to tell people what to do. Wanaume wanapenda kuambia watu cha kufanya. But when women listen to women, lakini kusikiza wanawake, they might cry together. Wanajalia pamoja. They might not a head together. Wamekuwa wana muda pamoja. They might touch each other. Wametaguza mmoja kila mmoja. They might not do so much teaching. Hawatafanya hii mafunzo mengi haya. So husband in order to, you know, make your wife feel good, kwa kumwanaume kufanya mke wako kuhisi amefurahia. Spend time with her. Chukua muda na yeye. Listen to her. Msikize. And then find languages of love. Find languages. Na hizo hata lugha tano za upendo. Respond to their feelings. Respond to their feelings. Wajibikia ile usia wake. When you When you see that she's unhappy about something, ukiisia kwamba hajafurahisha kwa sababu ya can say, I see that you are unhappy. Mwana, bwana anaweza sema kwamba naona kwamba hujafurahia. And say some words of appreciation. Na na kwena nia ya shukurani. You have done a good job. Umetenda jambo mzuri. I really like you. Ninakupenda. Then the wife will feel accepted feel important. Mwana muka tahisi ya kwamba yeye ni wadhamana. Many wives feel like this in front of the husband. Wanawake wengi huishi hivi mbele za wanaume wao. They feel that they are very low, not important at all. Wanaishi kwamba wako chini zaidi. What she talks about the husband will not listen. Chenye ataongea bwana yake atasikia. And that way she has no comfort for the husband. Na niposa ana shukurani kwa ajili ya mwanamke bwana yake. So wives need comfort. Na imposa wanawake wanahitaji kufarijiwa. So the first is spend time, you know, and time concentrate your time with your wife with, uh, with people. That's love, first love. Yaani chukua wakati first language of love. Kuchukua wakati kwa kujumuika na ndoka ya upendo. Now this is much harder for men than women. Haya ni ngumu sana kwa wanaume na wanawake. For most men when they say to their wife, let's go and walk together. The wife would Usually, always be very happy unless if there's something wrong with the relationship. But when a wife asks her husband, can you take a walk with me? He'll say, why? <laughs> Yes. He doesn't feel it's something he wants to do. <laughs> But if you want a good, you know, happy wife, <laughs> spend more time with her. <laughs> Now you can apply all this with Jesus Christ and the church. Unaweza weka haya yote pamoja na mwili wa Yesu Kristo. Jesus is happy to spend time with his people. Yesu ako na furaha kuchukua wakati na watu wake. No matter how long you want Jesus to be with you. Aitalishi ni muda mrefu gani unataka Yesu awe pamoja nawe. He's very happy to do that. Ako na furaha sana kufanya hivyo. But for most men it's very difficult. Lakini kwa wanaume wengi ni ngumu sana. Because for men time is very important. Kwa sababu kwa wanaume kazi ni ya msani ya muhimu sana. If I have time I'll do this. Hii wakati nitafanya hili. I'll do that. Nitafanya ile. Or I'll sleep. Nitalala. I don't want to spend that talking. Sitaki kuchukua wakati kwa kuongea. Hiyo ni kupoteza wakati. Most men see that talking is useless. Maana wanaume wengi wana kuongea ni kazi bure. This also why men have problem having long time praying to God. Na niposa wanaume wako na shida ya kukua na usiada pamoja na Mungu sana. But God wants to grow in both directions. Na Mungu anataka muwe katika usiano wote pamoja. God created men so men can do works. Mungu ya kwamba Mungu alimumba mwanadamu ili afanye kazi. But he also wanted men to learn from the women to have more relationship. Lakini mwanamume ajifunze kwa mwanamke ili awe na uhusiano pamoja. When you have good relationship with people, kama uko na uhusiano na watu, you have a better marriage and a better church. Uko na ndoa iliyo salama na kanisa iliyo salama. Actually, 
Pastors can learn from the wife how to care about feelings. Na mchungaji anaweza jifunza kwa mama jinsi ya kushughulikia hadhi ya hisia. And then the members tell the pastor about the trouble in her family. Na liposa wa shirika wataongea mambo kuhusu hali katika jamii yake. And then she said, "Oh, my husband's not good. I'm not happy." Mbe bwana yako leo yangu si mzuri, sina furaha. And the uh, pastor feel that she's like a wife. Mm -hmm. I mean, like my wife, you know, mm -hmm. begging. Mm -hmm. and, and very often he has no patience to listen and then to respond to her feelings. But if the husband, if the pastor can listen and then say, oh, it must be difficult for you. Na kama mchungaji anaweza sikia na nseme inaonekana ni ngumu sana kwako. To respond to the feelings. Hata kuwajibikia hisia zake. You must be unhappy. Inaonekana hauna furaha. It must be a big burden for you. Inaonekana ni mzigo kwako. Now many people will say what well, this is useless, you know. Na watu wengine watasema hii ni bure tu. But for a person suffering, lakini kwa mtu ambaye anateseka she was saying, oh, the pastor understands me. Now let me ask the woman here. When you tell your pastor or someone about some, you know, some unhappy things in your home. And then he said to you, oh, it must be difficult for you. It must make you unhappy. How do you feel? What did she say? She did not understand what you explained. Okay. Now, think about it. If something happened in your family now, someone gets sick, or your husband fought with you, and you're very unhappy, and you go to the pastor. Now, one response of the pastor, Go home and pray. Trust in God. Don't cry. <laughs> and the pastor says to you, It must be difficult for you. You must be unhappy. When this happened in your family, let me tell you, let me ask you, which one you like more? Number one or number two? First one is Ama namba tuwe ni anapambia kwamba inaonekana ni ngumu sana. Inaonekana unapitia uzito. Gari utafraia na ayo. Go and pray. Number one. Number one. She's saying number one. She likes number one. Go and pray. How about you? Number two. Number two. Now why do you like number two? Kwa nini unapenda nambari ya pili? Kwa sabu ni kama mengia ya ni kwa filmse zako. Ana filmbe ni wona filmbe. Because she's responding to my feelings. Right. He is sharing. He is sharing her feelings. Right. Now, how about the woman back there? Do you like first one or second? Would have been a banza my opinion. She likes first one too. Yes. Okay. Now, you, you, you have to think about this. Now, let me, let me, let me guide you again. Why any way me say? If one of the church member, if you no know, one of your family member pass away today or yesterday, moja wa jamienu akaga leo, and or go to the hospital, ama hende hospitalini, very serious. Yeye ni mgonjwa sana. How would you feel inside? Kuda hisi namna gani ndani yako? Very unhappy, right? Yes. And then you go to the pastor. Alafu ende kwa mchungaji. Or go to your husband. Amende kwa mne wako. And your husband says, pray. Amende kwa mne wako. Omba. Confess your sins. Kiri da biza. Ask God to help you. Musaidia, muambia kusaidia. And then, if, now this first response, second response. Na, kujibikia kwa pili. 
Oh, that must make you feel very sad. That must be difficult for you. When this person passed away, when he go to the hospital, it must make you feel unhappy. Which one do you like more? One or two. Raise up your finger. One or two. Moja, I'm happy. Two, you like two now. <laughs> How about you? One or two? How about the men? How about the men? How about the men? Do you like two or one? Number two. Now, when you really feel sad, unhappy, do you want people to teach you? When you feel very sad, do you want people to teach you? No. No. Now for pastors, if you have some problem in ministry, you share with the pastor, and the pastor says, you have to pray more. You have to repent. You have to learn how to help your members. Okay, one response, number one. And then number two, the person says to you, I know it's hard. Ministry is difficult. Sometimes give you burden. And you could feel unhappy. Which one do you like better? Number two. Raise your finger. One or two. The other people. Everyone can raise your finger. When you're doing ministry. Because now, some people say, that doesn't help me. But the person is Feeling your feeling. Is this important? Is it important? You make make it make you feel what well, someone knows my feeling. I'm not lonely. Let me tell you, most people in your church and people outside need that. When they are unhappy, and you just tell them pray and ask God to help you, the first feeling they have is you don't know my feelings. You don't care about my feelings. You just tell me what to do. Now, do you understand the difference? So for husband and wife too. If the husband can always feel the feeling of the wife, now sometimes we have to say things like this. I know you are unhappy. Say it. Tell them to say. I know it's difficult for you. I know it's not easy. And also we can say, I appreciate you for everything you've done. That makes people feel encouraged and has more motivation to move on. When the people who serve God it helps you in the ministry and he tells you it's hard to do evangelism I didn't bring anyone to Jesus and then you say pray more <laughs> work hard <laughs> and you can bring more people <laughs> how would they feel <laughs> right the pastor just want me to work doesn't care about my feelings. And that way, the person may say, I don't want to help you anymore. So, now we understand, it's very important to important to understand the other person's feeling and understand the feeling instead of just telling them what to do. Now later when we want to guide them, we can guide them. Now how do we guide them? 
how can we have joy in the Lord? Na tunaweza kuaje furaha katika Bwana? How can we handle this problem? Tunaweza shughulikiaje hali hizi? So these are questions to guide dear person. Na hii ndio mwelekeo wa kuongoza mtu kama huyo. I'll talk about it in the next two days. Nitaongea kwa masiku zinazokuja. But the first thing if that, we can do it. Na kitu ya kwanza kama tunaweza ifanya feel the feelings of their person think of if you were that person Not for husbands here you think of if you were a woman all day long working at home taking care of the children and then you go home and tell her to do more or the husband and comes home and the husband says you have done a good job I love you I like you you are important to me now which one would the wife like? number two yes so for husband to make the wife happy always think about her feelings na kwa mwanamume kufanya mwanamke kuwa na furaha fikiria hisia zake express her feelings wewe ajipikia hisia zake accept her feelings kubali hisia zake now if she continues to be unhappy akiendelea kuwa kutokuwa na furaha we can say something like tunaweza sema kitu kama uh, i care about your feelings too ninajali sana hisia zako and what can i do to help how can we have more joy in the Lord but at the same time not to give her guilt that way the wife will feel more respected okay let's go back to the five languages of love first is concentrated time together Second, words of love. Words maneno of love. ya upendo. Words of appreciation. Maneno ya shukurani. Words of kindness. Maneno ya busara. Okay? Number 2. So it's basically words of love. Number 3, nambari ya tatu, service of love to serve to help service of love ibada ya upendo number 4 yaine gifts of love bipawa ya upendo and then number 5 nambari ya tano body contact ali ama kujipika kwa body contact Contact with the body. Touch her. Kiss. Okay. Now we do according to what the other person likes. That what makes the other person feel happy. So the time together that we want to make the other person feel happy when we talk together. And not a time of fight and quarrel. But a time of listening. For husbands to listen to the wife makes her feel happy. And then number two. Words of love. I like you. What you've done for me is great. You are a great gift from God for me. Now, but some people just cannot say it. It's too hard. It's like you are so great. And so small. But if when we can say that to the husband or wife, she'll feel happy. And we'll have a better wife and better husband. Okay, and then uh, number three, service of 
love. Urumayaupendo. What we do for the other person that the other person will feel love. Chenye tutatendea uyo mwengina isi ya kwamba amependo. For instance, many wives do the bad or other things for the husband. Mbabla nasema kitu wana wakai wanatenda mambo mengi kusu wana ume. Thinking it, thinking about it like, you know, showing love. Wanyesha upendo. It's thinking of it, this action, you know, do the bad and wash the clothes as an action of love. Now, the husband should appreciate that. But many husbands didn't pay attention. When the bed is all done, everything is well done. And he comes home. He just throws his clothing on top. And could ruin everything. So for many husbands they don't feel that as an action of love. Unless he thinks about it. Now but for many husbands, if the wife comes and massage the mm. husband, he feels that more. Because men like body contact. Maana wanaume wanaisi wanafrahia ile ukuso. So he can sense his service anaisi bada yake ama ishara yake upendo. So you want to do something that makes the other person feel loved. Na liposa nataka paje siya ya mbae nafanya uyo mtu kuisi ya kwa mamefurahi. And then number four, gifts of love. Na hine vipawa vya upendo. It doesn't have to be a big gift. Now, everything I have, like my picture of my wife and me, and my cell phone and my uh, calendar also. Now, she did it all for me. That she always, you know, and she has our pictures all over the house. Hello. That she always, you know, that she treasure our relationship. And she gave me gifts like this. One time, in, uh, maybe one of my birthday, she made many hearts and put it on a mirror in the shape of a big heart. On each heart there was a message. She always think of something to do for me. It might not be expensive. But it makes my heart happy. But she's also willing to spend money on me too. So expensive or not expensive gifts from her shows her love. Na vitu vya dhamana ama sio vya dhamana sana lakini ni kipawa kwangu inaonyesha upendo. So husbands if you go buy something for her little something a candy take home and then say it when you give it to her. Na wakati mwingi wanaume ukiendo kinunua kaka kitu tu nuleta nusu unomwambie I want to show you how much I love you. So I give you this. That means much more. That's what obeying Paul said, love your wife. The point is, are you willing to do it? When you're, when you're willing to do it, you have a better wife. A happier wife. A wife who doesn't nag. Now I have communication with my wife. When she tells me something to change, when I tell her I hurt you. I will think about what to do. Then she will stop. Now, she really knows how to submit. And at the same time, I really love her. Sometimes I tell her about my one of my 
uh, idea of doing ministry or doing something. Wakati mwingi nimemwambia kuhusu maono yangu ya kufanya huduma ama vitu fulani. And then sometimes she gave me a different opinion. Lakini yeye ananipa mawazo tofauti. But after she told me she would say this. Lakini baada ya kuniambia ataniambia hivi. I gave you my opinion. Nilikupa mawazo yangu. You know it? Unajua? You can think about it. Unaweza ifikiria? You can decide what to do. Unaweza muache nyeta kufanya. She really know how to let go. Anajua jinsi ya kwenenda. And that makes me feel like she's the girl when I was dating her. Inanifanya kuisi ya kwamba ni mstana jinsi vile nilikuwa ni kemchumbia. Not like a nagging wife. Sio kama mwanamuke wa kujifuna. So the wife also understand the husband doesn't like nagging. Na mwanamke leo anajua kwamba mwanamume hataki mtu mwenye anayesumbua. When the wife can draw the husband's attention, azide mwanamke anaweza istikia hisia za mwanamume. And just say I see a problem. Na aseme kwamba ninaona shida. How can we solve that? Tunaweza suluhisha namna gani? And then can discuss with the husband. Tunaweza jadiliana na mwanamume. Or let the husband make up his mind what to do. Alafu acha mwanamume atengeneze mawazo ya kufanya. Give space and time to the husband. Ili mpe muda apatie mwanamume muda. That way the husband will feel more free to do things. Ndipo mwanamume kama atasikia uhuru kufanya mambo. Also the two of them can talk about it. If I need something, see something need to be done, how can I talk with you? Na kama ni kiona kitu ambacho natakani tutenda, ni okay na wana mna gani? Okay. Now let me finish this five language of love. Number five is body contact. Yeah. Mwisho ni msema kwamba kukuzana. Now body contact is not necessarily sex. Na katika kukuzana sio tu neno langono. It could be just touching. Inaweza kuwa tu kushika. Hugging. There can be a lot of body contact during the day. Inaweza kuwa na ile kusiana kwa mwili kwa kuku kwa siku. When we eat together, when I eat with my wife. Inapo kula na mke wangu. And when we go to sleep. Tunapo ena kula na. We hold hands together. Tunashika mikono pamoja. Now some people say, I just cannot do it. Muto na sema siwezi fanya ipo. But it really. Keep our relationship in a very high level. Lakini tukita tuweke usiano wetu katika kiwango cha juu. And it's enjoyable. Na ni afurahia. And she's very supportive for me. Na ni wa sada kwangu. And she encourages me. Ana ni miza mimi. And she gave me a lot of wisdom, a lot of suggestion of wisdom. Na ni pa mawazo ya kikima sana. I honestly think that God gave her to me as a great gift. Na ninaamini kwamba Mungu alinipa kwangu mimi kama kikundi kipige kipawa kilichokikuwa. And I told her all the time. Na ninamwambia kila wakati. So I encourage you to go home. Do you want to build on your marriage? I mean, kuhimizi uende nyumbani. Je, unataka ukae katika ndoa? There are different levels of marriage. Kuna upendo tofauti katika ndoa. Some marriage are very good. Ndoa zingine ziko za furaha sana. Some marriages are terrible. Na ndoa zingine ni shida. But many marriages are in between. Lakini ndoa zingine ziko katikati. Not the best but not the worst. Sio bora sana na sio mbaya sana. When you are in this condition, ukiwa katika hii hali, at least something can be done to improve it. Na kama kitu kitatendeka kuimarisha. Now be a good steward of our life kuwa mwangalizi mwema wa ajili maisha yetu we don't just manage our money and time atuwe zitengeneza tu pesa tu we manage our marriage tuna ifadhi ndoa yetu so if you go home and start to say nice thing and spend time with your spouse basi unapoenda na kuongea mambo mema pamoja na mke wako the wife not to neck so much na mke wako asiwe kusumbua sana now for men when they are unhappy they like to be left alone na wanaume kama wajafurahia wanataka wabaki peke yao. When women are happy they like to have someone to talk about. Na wanawake kama wanasikia wana furaha wanataka mtu wa kuongea naye. So when the wife sees that the husband is unhappy, now 
bibi anapoona ya kwamba mzee hajafurahia. She can ask him what happened. Anaweza muuliza nini litendeka. If the wife is always nice and gentle, na mzee kama atakuwa mwema na mpole, the husband might be willing to talk about it. Oh, mzee atakuwa na itikia But when some wives hear about the problem of a husband, like if the wife hears that the husband has a sickness, he'll say you have to go to the hospital, you have to go to a doctor, you have to do this, do that, you have to eat this medicine, take this medicine. And then the husband will feel this overwhelming. And then the husband will feel this overwhelming. And then the husband will feel this overwhelming. Sometimes a husband needs some space. You can suggest, but let him decide. We cannot change the person to the person we want him to be. You know, if you have one, want him to be like you, then you marry someone like you. Na kama itaka awe kama yeye ungewa ungewa mtu mwenye kara yuko kama wewe. When you marry him, he was like this. He probably most of him would not change. No, he from more ni kwa jinsi vile ndivyo hivyo. Lakini kwa kubwa hata badilika sana. So don't try to change. Usi jaribu kumbadilisha. But try to good see the good things. Lakini jaribu kuona mambo yaliyo mema. Make him feel happy. Na umuiri umfanya isi la msoe. Sides can work together. Ili yapamba pamoja na zaidi pamoja. And then you can enjoy the marriage much more. No na weza frai ando zaidi. But I know that in this country there's no equality of sexes. Na katika inji na juu akona ili hali ya ya usawa katika jinsi ya. Because for instance, most wives have to cook and then eat with the children. Maana wanawake wengi na taka na wapike na wakure na watoto. And a man eat. By themselves. <laughs> Now, to me, this doesn't build up the family relationship. I hope you want to start to change that. Because first we want to love the wife and then the children. Don't put the friendship with the friends above the friendship with the wife and the children. Like in a family, the, the husband will talk to the father and the brothers while eating. But actually, he should spend more time talking to wife and the children. Lakini kwa upeli ni kwamba inatakana chukue muda kiongea na mke wake na watoto. So I hope you see this. Tumai umeona. Another thing in this country I see is, is not good. Is that there is an overwhelming pressure of people have to get married. The Bible says, "Do not be yoked together with non-Christians." But many Christians in this country will marry a non-Christian or a lukewarm Christian. Nande wa Kristo katika inji unapata na wao watu ni wasi amini. Ama umkristo mae ni vugu vugu. And the whole life suffer. Na maisha yote ana teseka. So I encourage you, if you are parents, na niposa ni na pemiza kama wewe nimzasi. So force your children. Usilazimisha mtoto wako kuole kama kuwa. In First Corinthians chapter seven. It says that a single man or single woman can serve God more. And maybe it is not my pamba mana muki ali ya pekia kama mana mali ya pekia kana zatumi ya mungu kwa kufuza kizote. So I like you to see that the Bible, you know, say that it's okay to be single or married. And the pastor maybe it is not my kuwa mo pekia kama wale. When it's planned by God. Iyo ime pangwa na mungu. And not to force marriage. Na siyo kula zimisha ndoa. Okay. Now I I I can stop here. Just briefly let you know what men and wives can do to build the marriage, and then some problem I see in this country. And the person that I can come and see a poor idea, come on, we'll never come back. Change my name, okay? Now my name, man, I just find a cool. Kufanya marisha ndo azao na shida zenye naona katika inji hii. I know you cannot change everything right away. Najua wezi badilisha kitu ipo ipo. But at least you change a little bit every day. 
Hilo na zabadilisha kidogo kidogo. And things will improve. Ni hito mitabadilika. Okay. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will guide you to do some, have some changes, have some changes in your marriage. Wale ya kwa mbadiliko katika ndoa yako na kwa jamina. 